Good morning guys, this is it. I decided I can't take it anymore. I must get my hair redone. Anyway, that's how I'm starting my day today. So come join me. All right, so uh, the hair didn't go quite to plan. It doesn't really look the way that I had hoped it would look. I, we put toner in it and thought that the toner would help to cancel out the blue, but the toner actually just made the hair more blue. So back to the drawing board. Hope you don't mind it looking like this for today's episode. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna change it. I'm probably gonna make it pink. But anyway, I've basically been collecting various clothes in my thrift shopping journey over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I've been looking for things to decorate my guest bedroom here, but in doing so, I've also been slowly discovering items of clothing that are what I think to be very, very unique. So in this set of drawers here, I have some clothes that I'd like to show you today. Starting off with this little black skirt. Now this was a pick by Michelle yesterday. So if you saw yesterday's episode, I took one of my subscribers out for a shopping trip and uh, she picked up this skirt and she said to me, you've got to buy this. This was $5. This was from the Salvos in Tempe. When she, she like reached over the top of my change room and handed it to me and I thought, oh, it's going to be a little bit too short, but I think it's just appropriate. It, it's short, yes, it's a little, little bit short, but short in a fun kind of way. Short in like a, I don't mind wearing some stockings underneath this and going out in public kind of way. It's got a really, really nice shape to it. It's uh, actually got belt holes, which funnily enough, when I was doing my uh, dark academia haul, I found a skirt with belt holes and I was like, this is the first skirt I've ever seen with belt holes. And now suddenly we have a second one. So I don't have that many black skirts. Most of them are like cheaper kind of skirts from Yes Style. This is from a store called Chicka Booty, which is like a somewhat cheap store here in Australia, but their stuff is like that little bit nicer quality. So this actually feels really good. It's a really heavy fabric. It holds its shape really well. It's got a little bit of a floral pattern in it. And uh, I'm really happy that Michelle found this one because I probably would have overlooked it on the rack. I don't think I would have picked it up, but this is gonna become like a staple of mine. I feel like I'm gonna wear this a lot. It's so cute. While we were at that Salvos, I also found this little tiny bag. So in my Yes Style green haul, I got this teeny tiny little green bag that was exactly the same size and shape as this one. And uh, I found a leopard print version of the same bag, which, look, the more teeny tiny bags I find, the happier I am, which means, look guys, double the happiness because I found this one at a Vinnie's. Now this one was $12. This is that same sort of fake crocodile skin. Ooh, oh, hi. 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 Oh, you're leaving. Oh, no, don't go. What do you think of my bags? Oh, you look lovely. Which one do you like more? What did you do? Oh, I, I, I hit this. I like took a chunk of skin like that big off my arm. Um, yes, which bag do you like more with this outfit? You are the one that styles me better than I style myself. They, no, they the all one on the right. Them. This one? Yeah. Okay, all right. The, the husband has spoken. Is because this... it matches your shoes, that would conflict unless you had like something to tie that in. Like leopard print shoes? Have you got those? Well, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. All right. Sure. Have... Bye. See ya. I love you. I love you. So the Salvos charged me $4 for this little leopard print bag and Vinnie's charged me $12 for this one. Both of them have their own respective straps inside, which is great because it's, it's always a shame if you thrift something and it's not complete. So it's nice when someone donates something and they remember to donate the strap along with it. So both of these have their straps. Look, let's be honest guys, the early 2000s trends are slowly clawing their way back into style and I am here for it. Speaking of early 2000s styles, look at this dress. So I tried this on yesterday and people were leaving comments on yesterday's video saying, I hope she bought that red dress. Well, good news, I did. I, uh, I didn't buy the Winx Club dress and actually looking back over the footage while I was editing it, I was like, damn it, why didn't I buy that? It was so cute. But I just didn't like the way that it was fitting me at the top. Could have actually been the very strange, unusual padded bra that I was wearing with it though that was kind of making it look a little bit awkward. But this one, this one is by a brand called Zigzag and it says that it's made in Australia. It looks definitely like it's something from the early 2000s. I haven't seen clothes like this in a little while in shops here in Australia. I really, really like the shape of this. I love the length. It's sort of halfway up my calf and I used to hate dresses like this, but if I had a pair of heels, I think that this would look really, really elegant. 
don't know how it would look with one of these. Hang on, let's see. Is that kind of like tie the look together? Possibly. Anyway, this dress was a little bit expensive. This was $35. And at first I put it back on the rack multiple times. I put it back because I was like, that's way too much money to spend on an old dress. But when I thought, oh, it's made in Australia and there's not much clothing made in Australia. Clothes made in Australia do feel that little bit better quality. Like they used to make things differently back in the day. So I thought, you know what? Maybe it is justified. I will get it. I actually quite like the Paisley. I didn't like Paisley in the past, but I'm sort of branching out of my comfort zone and out of my pastel zone and embracing some new colors. And I don't mind this at all. Now, seeing as I'm wearing something red, I may as well show you this little watch that Michelle picked out. This was, zero dollars apparently. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was five dollars but someone has ripped off the tag but all the watches in the box were five dollars and this watch has a little tiny Santa on him so this is going to be my Christmas Eve and Christmas Day watch and uh, the thin red band actually totally matches this dress. Huh, this doesn't look bad at all especially paired with the beautiful handmade necklace that my best friend Sam made me, available on his Etsy store, link in the description box below. So speaking of Christmas and Christmas watches, I did thrift a Christmas dress yesterday. This was $8. Oh my God, I just realized. I thought this was a dress, but this is actually overalls. This has little legs built in. This is absolutely hideous. I look like Santa has locked me in jail. This is like a jail jumpsuit, but uh, you know what? It wouldn't be Christmas if the clothing wasn't hideous. So $8 for this absolutely heinous Christmas jumpsuit. What do you guys think? You know what? In the, in the weirdest way, I kind of feel like this is something Billie Eilish would wear. You know, like she's the bad guy. Stop. What the hell are you talking about? Wear your Christmas clothes out and about. Yeah, I don't know if I'd go out in public wearing this, but if I had a group of friends over for Christmas dinner, I might actually break this out. Like, I, I like the thought of greeting my guests at the front door and opening the door and they look at me and they burst out laughing. Like, I, I kind of, that's what I go for. Like, I want to make my friends laugh, whether they're laughing at me or with me. As long as they're laughing, that makes me happy. And I think that if people see me wearing this, they're most certainly going to burst out into tears of laughter. So maybe not that much of a bad purchase. Something else that isn't that much of a bad purchase is this. I definitely ummed and ahed about this for ages. And what sort of pushed me over the line of buying it was the fact that this room that I'm decorating I'm, I'm going for this vintage retro theme. And when I saw this print, I couldn't help but think of the 60s. Actually, someone left a comment the other day and they were like, every time she miscategorizes her years, I cringe. I'm sorry, I didn't live through those years. I'm literally just going off my pop culture ideas of what years people wore what. And I think that, I think that this sort of pattern was worn in the 60s. You know what I should do one day? I should probably make a video where I actually properly explore different time periods and different fashions and trends that they wore. Because I would love to look at a piece of clothing like this and just straight off the bat know what year that it may have been made in. So this dress is by a brand called Yumi Kin. I'm not sure where it's made, that's all it says. It just says on the back of it, Yumi Kin. It was $10 and I wasn't going to buy it, but Michelle convinced me. And now that I'm wearing it, I actually, I really, really like it. I think it's really cute. I really like the cut and I like the way that it cinches in around the waist. I was thinking that I could buy this one and alter it, but now that I'm wearing it, I don't think I need to alter it. Like the, the only thing I may consider doing to it, if I was going to alter it, I could always cut it and have it as a crop, like a wrap top and then a skirt. But I think that it looks totally fine the way that it is. This is a really nice piece. The pattern is really lovely. $10 for something that feels so nice. It's got like a double layer on the inside. It's got, you know, a proper slip dress under it so it's not too sheer. And it's a really light fabric, perfect for summer. The weather is really warm here right now. So this is, this is perfect for me. I actually, I really love it. Look, let's, look at that. Look, this bag, so versatile. It goes with literally anything that I put on. All right, now this next one, I actually found this dress when I was thrifting for my Dark Academia haul. This brand is Cocktails and uh, it was, $6. I found this at the Salvos in Seven Hills and I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It's got these beautiful pearlescent yellow buttons up here. It's also got really big puffy sleeves. Unfortunately, it is so sheer that it, I, I, I cannot 
remove my arms from the T-Rex position. The arms must maintain the T-Rex modesty pose because if I move them, you will see everything. And I mean everything. So if I just cleverly pose with my arms and my hair like this, you would never know. But I do have to be very careful with what I wear underneath this because as beautiful as it is, it's just one single layer of very, very, very sheer yellow fabric and uh, it doesn't leave much to the imagination. But it does have this beautiful, beautiful long yellow skirt. Look at it, look at it twirl. I'm an angel. It's also got this elasticy waistband here, which means that it sort of pinches in and it lets this fabric kind of fold. Oh, I'm so dizzy from spinning. This fabric kind of folds down over the elastic, so it creates this really nice waistline. I really like the height that the sleeves sit at, and if you guys watched my haul for the Iconic, where I tried out luxury Australian designer brands, there was a yellow dress by Berger Christensen, I think that's the designer's name, I think she's based in Holland, and that dress was so expensive and it looked really similar to this. That was literally like, I think it was $900 or something, that dress, and I just found this one for what did I say it was? Six? Literally, I I was beside myself when I found this. I just have to figure out, maybe I need to get like a, a white petticoat or something to wear underneath it. If anyone is familiar with wearing like very sheer, vintagey kind of dresses, please tell me down below how you get away with like what you wear underneath. Because yes, you could just wear like nude undies and stuff, but it is literally so sheer that even if you're wearing nude undies, you can still see straight through it. I mean, you may as well just be wearing like a PVC skirt, like that one that I found yesterday. But the little button details here, and the big puffy sleeves, and the cinched in waist, and the super long flowing skirt, this is one of my favorite thrifted items by far. So uh, once I figure out how to style this and what to wear underneath it, you guys will see it properly, but six bucks. Another yellow thing that I got was this skirt. Now this was once again inspired by my uh, potential cottage core haul that might be coming up soon. So this is the brand Cotton On, and I got this at a Vinnie's for $7. Cute little yellow skirt with flowers all over it. The only problem is that it's a few sizes too big for me. I'm definitely going to need to take this one in because I love it so much. I love the colour, I love the print, but it's, it's a... Uh... Yeah, well, it's too big. I was thinking that I could just wear a belt with it instead of having to sew it and take it in, but unfortunately, even when I wear a belt, it just kind of like leaves all of this fabric kind of sticking out here, unfortunately. So I am going to have to familiarize myself with a sewing machine because not only do I have this one, I also have this other one that I showed you a couple of days ago. So both of these were too big for me. This one is much, much heavier. This is by H&M. It's got multiple, multiple layers of fabric. This is a really full voluminous skirt. And this one should be pretty easy to change the size of because it's just got an elastic hem running all the way around. So hopefully I should just be able to snip, should maybe just make a little incision, pull the elastic out a little bit, snip it, then reconnect it and then Bob's your uncle, like it should be fine, good to go. I will be altering some clothes coming up a bit later, but I literally, I don't know how to sew. But my friend Caitlin knows how to sew. So we're gonna get together and we're going to sew some clothing and she's gonna teach me how to use a sewing machine because that's something I really wanna get into going into 2021. I've been loving this thrifting content so much more than I love fast fashion or anything like that. So I really wanna keep doing this sort of thing going forward, but I would like to learn how to actually alter things myself. So that will be coming up next year, but for now I'm just accumulating this little collection of things that I would like to alter and these beautiful yellow skirts are definitely on the list. Another one that people were leaving comments about yesterday saying, I hope she bought that, is this little vest. Now this was $8 and the brand is called In Time. It's pastel blue on the inside and it's got pastel flowers on the outside. I literally feel like a pastel hobbit and I'm so into it. I definitely liked the way this looked yesterday when I tried it on over the top of that off the shoulder white top that I thrifted. Still looks quite nice over the top of this white button up shirt. But the funny thing was when I saw this on the rack, I was like, ugh, ugly and cute at the same time, but more so ugly. But then I put it on and I was like, there's nothing ugly about this, don't be silly. This is glorious in the most middle earth way possible. <laughs> Something else that I found that I had the same sort of reaction where I first picked it up and I was like, eh, ugly. But then I thought about it a bit more and I was like, no, no, that's really cool, was this top. Now, anyone that is familiar with designer brands, you may know the brand Kenzo. A lot of people don't know Kenzo because it's not like one of those loud sort of designer brands like Louis Vuitton or Gucci that everyone's heard of. Not everyone knows Kenzo, but people that know designer brands seem usually no Kenzo. So this is a actual authentic Kenzo top. And I've got a friend who's literally all she wears is expensive 
designer clothes. Like she refuses to wear anything else. And 90% of her wardrobe consists of Kenzo and she will work for like six months and then she'll buy one $800 top. Her, she has literally like a capsule wardrobe with 10 pieces of clothing in it and every single thing is some ridiculous expensive designer thing. And she, everything she wears is Kenzo basically. And she pays hundreds if not thousands of dollars for clothing like this. And this, this is a, it says it's made in Morocco, Kenzo jeans. And when I first picked this up, I thought, this feels like really nice fabric. And then I looked at the price and I was like, good Lord, it's $40, what the hell? And then I looked at the brand and I was like, oh, it's Kenzo, add to cart. That's worth it, $40 for a Kenzo top. I'm gonna try and do some research and see if I can find this top online. I'm not sure how much it would go for anywhere else. Maybe just $100, maybe $200. I am so happy that I found it. It's definitely not my usual style, as you can tell, but I think it's really elegant. I really love the beading, it's so beautiful. And what I love most about it is it is the nicest feeling fabric. I could wear this for days on end, and I probably would. I'm a grub. It's so comfortable. It's the sort of thing that you never want to take off. And I'm going to try really hard to figure out a couple of good outfits that I could wear this with. Obvious outfit number one is a high-waisted skirt. Not bad, not bad. Could also look good with high-waisted pants. I really don't know because I very, very rarely wear tank tops. I would consider this a tank top. I very, very rarely ever wear tank tops like this. I, I actually hated them for many, many, many years, but as the weather gets hotter and as global warming sinks its teeth in on Australia, I really am getting to the point where I have to wear less and less clothing and it's getting to the point where I'm like, as much as I hate tank tops, I cannot exist in sleeves. Now, as much as I would love to wear this one in summer, it is such thick, lovely, woolly kind of material that I probably can't, but aside from that, it's a, oh, this is a real find. I'm very happy with this one and I'm gonna be wearing this a lot, maybe not so much in summer, maybe more so in spring. But the fact that it's Kenzo, I really like the idea of thrifting luxury and designer items. If you guys haven't seen my Japanese luxury shopping thrift video, check it out because I head to a bunch of stores in Tokyo that sell luxury goods secondhand. And so far, I would say in Sydney, the Tempe Salvos and the Balgala Salvos were the two places that I found designer items. I found Louboutin heels, I found Gucci, Balenciaga, Alexander McQueen, Kenzo, all sorts of things at those stores. They are a little bit pricier. Yes, they're gonna be $100, $200 or so, but that's a small price to pay for luxury items when those sort of things are like two, $3,000 brand new. So this one, I was really, really happy to find it. But as I said, I'm not really used to wearing tank tops like this. So if you have any style ideas for me, please leave them in the comment section down below. Maybe you've seen some Pinterest outfit photos or something that you could link me to because I, I need a little bit of inspiration. But uh, something that I don't really need inspiration for is this, this beautiful dress. Now I got this at the Vinnie's in Castle Hill and this is the brand Loretta. Now I've seen this brand online, they advertise on Facebook all the time and this dress is so heavy. It's the most ridiculously thick, beautiful fabric ever. I'll show you the brand in case, you, in case anyone's interested. See Loretta, it even has a metal tag. Like it doesn't get much more bougie than that. It's basically impossible to get into this dress because it is so skin tight. Please bear with me. <laughs> All right, I'm in. That was a little bit of a struggle. Uh, but now that I'm in it, I am glad that this was the very last piece of clothing that I'm trying on in this video because I don't see this coming off anytime soon. Because the fabric is so thick, it kind of goes and it sucks everything in and it creates a really nice shape. The only problem and the only issue that I foresee is it's a little, little bit close to my own skin tone, maybe, because it, is it too close? I feel like this dress would have been very, very expensive brand new, a couple of hundred dollars at least. So for $20, I was like, that's a steal because it's never been worn. It was brand new with its tags on. It's beautiful, luxurious fabric, creates a very nice silhouette, I think. Would look really, really nice with nude heels, obviously, and hey, potentially even, I don't know, I'm just guessing, maybe, Maybe it would look nice with a tiny little white bag. What do you guys think? Bit awkward to style a piece like this with jewelry though, because it's so high up here on the neck that you can't really wear a necklace with it. You also have to accessorize with your, your bracelets and your rings and things like that, and particularly your shoes. But this, to me, this is a real like Instagram dress. Like you see a lot of girls 
on Instagram wearing things like this. And I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if some influencer was given this by Loretta, because I know they work with influencers. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if an influencer was given this for free and then donated it after they took some pictures with it, because like it's, it's literally never been worn and it's so nice. Just a couple more things to show you now. Uh, first of which being this pair of shoes, which was $5. And at first when I saw them, I was like, hideous. Like, like everything that I've been buying, I see it and I'm like, hideous. And then I suddenly fall in love with it. So these, these are sparkly pointy toe slippers. And they just, once again, make me think of, you know that rich lady I keep referencing, the one whose husband died and she's lounging around her house in a fluffy kimono drinking red wine. Like, she's also wearing these shoes. Guys, we need to give her a name. What is her name? Because we talk about her a lot, that lady. We, we seem to end up with pieces of clothing that would match her style. She would totally be lounging in her house wearing these bougie slippers. Sparkly, bougie, pointy toe slippers that I love. Can you see them? Do you see? It's very difficult to lift up my legs in this dress. That's, that's quite literally as far as I can lift them. So I hope you can see the shoes. So I don't know if you're supposed to wear these shoes out of the house or not. I don't think I will be. I think that they're also house slippers. But look, they're just really cool and unique. And like I've literally never seen shoes like this anywhere in a store. So they were another good find. And then the very last thing for today. Look, look at this. 100% genuine, oh, I'm, I'm sure it really is. This was, I think this was $2. This is a fake Louis Vuitton X Supreme iPhone, oh, $8, there you go, iPhone case. This fits my phone, look. But I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I wanted this Louis Vuitton, the, the actual original one, it's brown. I wanted that phone case, because it's really, really cool, but also like, who's gonna spend that sort of money, not me. And I don't, I'm not very big into fakes or anything like that, but it was from a Finney's, guys. Like, the money's going to charity, and I'm not really... Are you supporting the counterfeit industry if you buy a counterfeit item from a thrift store? There's a discussion point for you. Please, class, feel free to discuss below. I'd love to do a haul of, like, counterfeit items that I've thrifted, but then again, I feel like people are going to say, you shouldn't be supporting the counterfeit industry, but then people say, you should be supporting thrift stores. So, like, where do you draw the line, really? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below, but with that, I'm going to take my iPhone Supreme Louis Vuitton phone case, and I'm going to go watch some TikToks for the next three hours because I'm really tired. Guys, guys, my parents have come over for dinner and my mum, look what she's wearing. Come mum, don't worry, I won't show your face. It's okay, she's shy. She doesn't want, pretty pastel mum doesn't want her face. But look, do you guys remember this from the dark academia hall? Look, look how she styled it. You look beautiful, mum. Oh, thank you, darling. It looks so, you look so fancy and rich. <laughs> rich. <laughs> Yeah. Very rich. <laughs> I like this. This is—is is this thrifted? Uh, yes. This one is thrifted. That was from um, Penatil's Lifeline nice, many nice. years ago. And you've got the beautiful jacket, the Jag jacket that I thrifted for you. And yes. also, you, I noticed you brought something with you. You brought the Swan. Can you go get the Swan? Oh yes, of course. I really want to show you guys this. So. I used to be massively into ceramics and stuff when I was in school. It was like a, a course that they offered at my school. And I made a clay swan. And you guys, some of you, if you watch my antique haul, you'll remember the beautiful iridescent pastel swan that I bought. And my mom was watching the video and mom was like, Alex, when you were in year eight, you made a swan and she's brought it over. Look, guys, I made this. I made the, how old was I when I made this? Um, perhaps eight. Eight, you reckon? No, I was older than that, wasn't I? Ten? Yeah, maybe, maybe ten. Anyway, I made this. I'm, I'm so proud of younger me. Where did my talent go? Because like these days, I just make TikToks. So what happened to the days when I made things like this? And you had, a, you made a very big white. Yeah, I made like one ten times as big as this too. That's at mum and dad's house. That one's too big to bring here. But mum's brought this one, and it, it's not pastel, but. I, I can probably sit him with my antique one, you know, over here. So I've got my antique swan and I've got the one that I made when I was in school. I literally, I made it in the school kiln. Like, I'm so proud of myself. Look, isn't he beautiful? Can you believe I made him? I literally haven't made anything out of clay since I made that. I made that not, oh God, if I was 10 years old, I'm 17 years ago. 
<laughs> so maybe sometime next year, once I'm over and done with Thriftmas, maybe I'll start really getting into like some DIY crafty kind of videos and I can start making things out of clay. Actually, my best friend Sam is currently, as we speak, like right now, right this moment, he's building a kiln at his house, like from scratch, building a kiln. So once his kiln is done, maybe I can get some clay and I can start making some things at his place so I can start making some pots for my plants and various things. So uh, anyway, sorry, I just, I just, mum walked in and she looks so nice and I just had to show you her nice jumper. You look great, mum. Yeah, oh, thank you, darling. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry, it was just a quick one, but I've got some really fun videos coming up toward the end of Thriftmas. We'll be finishing up the guest bedroom. We'll be doing some flipping of items that need to be painted, sanded, decorated, blinged out with rhinestones. I'm so excited to share those videos with you guys. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do and give us a thumbs up on this video and click the notification bell too so you don't miss any episodes of Thriftmas. This has been day 19. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.